Hey guys, welcome back. Happy spring 2022 anime season to you. The new anime season is kicking off. Many new titles are coming our way. But because of last season, you guys have proven to me that you actually enjoy watching this one. The view rates on these videos seem to be a lot higher than the other videos. We have decided to continue. We are breaking down episode 13, Requiem of the Rose King. We've entered a whole new act. There is a time skip. Before we get going, make sure you guys are subscribed. It really helps the channel out. I am hoping to hit 1k by the end of the year and as a celebration I will be doing a live stream. That live stream will have all the anime questions that I can think of, just generally chatting anime, getting to talk anime to you guys. Not on any particular anime but in general I'm just going to tell you things like my favourite ones, any fun thoughts, just cool fun anime session. I want to make those things a reality but we need to have more people to make it doable and worthwhile. Make sure if you are enjoying my content just give me a little subscribe it really really helps. We are back after a little break a little time skip. I love the way that we enter the new half. I'm going to call it a new act. This is a new act because it's Shakespeare with the curtain rising. I don't know the character's name but this character in the mask who is presenting us the time skip on the stage, presenting the story to us, almost acting as if he is a narrator. This character did have a announcement recently of the voice actor. I think it's Ishida. Kira Ishida perhaps might have been the voice actor. I just remember seeing it and I think his name's Richmond but it hasn't been given just yet. But this character is in the OP as well. A lot of new characters. Nice aging up of a few of our characters as well. We also open with a very nice Richard III quote, which is now has passed the season of our discontent. We have gone through a cycle. We're now with Richard being a completely different character. We have got some new characters this time. We've got a new character in the form of Elizabeth. Elizabeth is the child, the first oldest daughter of Elizabeth and King Edward gonna be putting the king in front of his name now because there's a new Edward in town which is the son of Anne and Edward slash Richard so there's a few Edwards now a few of the names are starting to get confusing because they're repeating it is tradition to pass down a name so in the sense of Elizabeth she has gained her mother's name and we've already seen with Richard taking on Daddy Richard's name. First glance of Richard with Anne this time. They have both married. Richard takes on the title of Duke of Gloucester. But the opening act already coming in on Richard showing displeasure at the farce that lies before them. A farce essentially is an act. It's an act that you put on. It's not real. It's fake. I like this and it kind of sets up the whole vibe of this episode as everything is a farce everything that's going on around you the court is now turning into a debauchery it's a farce it's no longer what it should be it's moved away from the upstanding days of daddy richard and underneath king edward we're seeing things falling apart there is a nice new op i like the op guys i like cello i am a big fan of cello i love the way the cello starts to build cello really does convey darker deeper more sorrowful sounds i really really like it i also like this op better than the first op i think it's better i also think the ed is nicer as well so moments to take into consideration that all the art for this show is hand drawn hand painted nice many many kudos i get to appreciate that in the kaleidoscope of characters that we see in the op the white and the red the roses coming together we do get to see the crown emitting a dark aura because that crown is what is the central aspect of all these characters everybody is vying for the throne everybody's vying for the crown the crown also taking on a more important role this time as at the end of the show the cake that richard pulled was in the shape of a crown that is richard's future richard will become a king that is no spoiler there richard III is richard III, a ruling monarch of england i will say here as well grown-up buckingham is an absolute heartthrob i adore the new character design for him i have a thing for him i think he's hot okay there we go i said it i'll say it once and we'll we won't touch it again but let's just say that buckingham every time you're on screen i'm a very happy person throughout the op we see richard covered in a growing shadow and we get to see a new form with a new demonic wings very similar to daddy richard but daddy richard has wings these are demon wings these are supposed to be more evil more darker i also I like the fact that in the op as well wearing the white fur that both edward and daddy richard have been seen wearing really looks good on them the op ends with richard asleep in their bed which is quite nice because it could be mistaken as a nightmare a lot of nightmarish things going on and then at the end richard's just lying there asleep hoping it's just a dream hoping it's actually all inside your head our opening scene taking place at a commemorative coronation i presume it's been a few years because the princes are slightly older now past 
party to celebrate Edward ascending the throne. Not quite sure how long the time skip has been, but the princes we saw at the end of last episode, one of them was a baby, a literal baby, and now the two princes are maybe eight, perhaps. I'm very bad at guessing the ages of kids, let alone anime children. It's a nice chance to reconnect with our characters past the time skip as well. The fateful princes, the ones who will be in the tower event coming up, named Richard and Edward. These are Edward's children, and Edward has named one child after himself and the other one after his brother Richard. No George right now, the slight discontent between the two, and we're going to see it this week anyway, bearing in mind that he did betray Edward. A very hard thing to get past. We've come back to George, and George is not in a good place. Bitter, a drunkard, we're not seeing him taking it very well. We're also given the information that he has has had his authority cut even further. There is a nice moment where we see George with the dragon. That is a nice nod to the folklore tale about Wales. Dragon on the flag. Yes, they get to have a dragon because they're that cool. But there's also a lot of people who are angry because George killed the dragon and he's just basically a douchebag because we like dragons. We want to see dragons alive and there's, there's no dragons anymore because he wiped them all out. Nice little fun take on that little folklore story there. George coming in to defeat the wicked dragon. He also calls himself a servant because that's now how he feels to his brother. We are told that Anne has had a son, but we're also told that she has had no more children, which is a nice hint that that marriage is really not going very well. This episode, we do get to reconnect with the superstitious nature of the country. England was a very different place. We do get this week quite a few aspects of folklore and superstition coming in. We get the future telling cakes. George calling it hogwash and Richard also agreeing, but both of them, after seeing the cakes drawn, slightly buying into what they're seeing. We are seeing a very unhappy George at this point. With him losing some of his authority, that has come at the bequest of Elizabeth. We saw last time she was trying to come cut down the amount of power that George was given. King Edward pulling the letter G, foreshadowing who is the G? What is the G? Cake is covered in red wine, which is supposed to show that George is maybe going to die or George is going to be the downfall of King Edward. That could be the person who is going to kill Edward. Could stand for George or Gloucester. This episode, though, seems to be leaning that George is the one they're trying to frame. Downwards the path of Shakespeare we go. We have a suspicious woman and elixir of passion trying to seduce the king. We have a witch and Shakespeare wouldn't be Shakespeare without a witch. Well, because 14th century Britain was a superstitious place to be. An old local woman peddling medicine. If suddenly that medicine goes wrong due to lack of scientific understanding, she could be suddenly framed as a witch. We do get the witch trials going on a bit later on. We're a little bit predating those, but there's always the superstition that witches live among them. One minute the woman giving you medicine curing your husband is good, but as soon as your husband suddenly dies, you need someone to scapegoat that woman there. She's a witch instead of her being some antisocial woman who doesn't really have any family, sadly. So that is the country we're in. That is the country that Shakespeare was writing from in his heyday as well. We do see that Anne has regrown her hair, which is a nice nod to the feminine ideals. Richard and Anne's son is Edward, but obviously I've told you that a lot of the times they name their children after the parents. Son Edward is named after Edward, who is actually the father who died last episode. Richard also knows that this isn't their son because, well, Richard isn't touching Anne and Richard doesn't believe that they can have a wife. They themselves are sinful. They don't deserve a wife. That's probably also why there is no second child. We do see Richard rejecting the flower as it is a feminine object and Richard is trying to be seen as a masculine Forbes. Hot Buckingham making an appearance. He took a wife on last season, which was a relative of Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth is playing the very important political marriage game, trying to get all your family members into high positions so you have a lot of the power. That is what she's done with a few of these people. Buckingham was angry that he had to take on the wife of Elizabeth, but could not reject this because Elizabeth is the queen. Poor, poor George really hitting the bottom of the barrel this week as he is drunk. He is a father, so we do know that he's got a child, but he's drunk, he's angry, he's bitter. He's even getting angry at Isabel as well, so he's a bit of a mess. He is now also worried that he will become penniless. Is this going to become nothing more than that servant George that he was talking about? But Isabel is plotting, and this is going to be the sad downfall of Isabel because she hired Jane and Jane is a witch and you do not get involved with witchcraft. Witchcraft is something you really shouldn't take on lightly. This ends up coming back at her. Obviously Jane is the one who's caused it. The idea of wishing death upon somebody 
nowadays if you're not superstitious most people just you just don't do it it's something you don't do her wishing death upon somebody at the stake of her own life the cracks this week starting to show in king edward's relationship we know the king is adulterous we know he has a lot of interest in females in general, mainly outside of his wife. Elizabeth at this point hadn't really battered much of an eyelid. This is the straw that breaks the camel's back. At this point, she has two sons. She doesn't actually need the king anymore. We already knew that. She never really loved her husband. She wanted the aces so she could rule without her husband involved. She just needs her sons to put them on the throne. The angle at this point is tilted because you've really upset Elizabeth. You really shouldn't upset her because she's quite a scary woman in her own right seems that the witch Jane has worked her spell. Now Elizabeth is being neglected by her husband, so we've finally gone too far. King Edward throwing the party of all parties, the drug party, laced with debauchery, inside the courts. The court has really fallen apart, and it's upon this party that Richard starts to see King Edward as perhaps not fit for the throne this is probably the first time and he sees the crown hitting the floor and says that you're not my father and this is also the first time richard gets a vision of daddy richard unlike before daddy richard has white wings for the first time we're seeing white wings not only a sign of purity it's a very good color things start to get a bit twisty at the end where the king has been cursed by isabel he does seem to recover after coming in contact with jane again whether jane has given him a cure or not three of the dolls were thrown onto the fire and she also wanted the princes dead which is quite terrifying that she was wishing death upon children something as well that i think is interesting with sickness taken on isabel as well is the threefold law that she has asked for death of some people from a witch and generally the threefold law is there's a price to pay and the price is her own life but the medicine bottle that is being administered when she's asking for her medicine has a pentagram on it and that is a symbol which is associated with witchcraft sadly we have our first death of the second act and this is going to leave a broken george even more broken my bets on jane poisoning isabel telling her that she's been giving her a poison at some point and then said take this medicine take this medicine if you get sick and that medicine's got even more poison in it jane is seeing the cracks in the family and she's really trying to work her way into them because we do see her taking an interest in richard as well for game of thrones fan you would note that she resembles melisandre a lot of the meddling a lot of the witchcraft going on that is the person that she is based upon Richard is told to arrest George because at this point George is suspected of trying to kill the king. That's treason. He's also trying to kill their children's triple treason. That's three counts of treason. We do get a really cool power trio at the end of this episode. We have a new partnership but we've finally got Buckingham at the hand of Richard. Buckingham's always wanted that. Buckingham has had more interest in Richard than Richard ever realises. Buckingham plans to put Richard on the throne. Immediately goes, you are my king. Catesby, no matter who Catesby serves, has always been loyal to Richard. I was really sad last time when Richard knocks Catesby's hand away. Catesby was trying to help Richard. I will find you a body we can hide. You don't have to kill Henry. These are my power trio. We are told that Richard pulled the crown from the cakes, foreshadowing of the future. Richard is going to be a king. It's cool to see all three of them on their way to go and arrest George. George being the fawn in the side of the family now. The new ED is nice. It's a nicer song. I really like it. It also conveys a darker vibe. It feels very regretful. The chorus is very, very nice because it sounds hopeful. And we see Richard in the credits looking sad, but also being lifted through the skies, through the seasons as things start to get a bit brighter at the end. Very excited to be back in the world of Shakespeare. Although this video does take one hell of an editing job because I always mess up. But Shakespeare is difficult as it is and the names go crooked and I will call a character the wrong name. A few of the videos in the last season, I said the wrong thing a few times. I called a character a wrong name. So occasionally I would just cut the name and talk about a character. I'm like, I really hope people can understand who I'm talking about because I don't want to re-record everything. Complex videos I have to record each season. And I don't even know why. The script ends up being really, really long because I'm throwing in a bit of history as well. Thank you guys so much if you are tuning back in and you have waited for me for 10 days. I wanted to give you some more history, some more details on this Shakespearean tragedy, Richard III. As Richard now progresses to go through more historical events, we've got some darker events coming our way. We've got a very big event coming our way now and we've already seen the two characters that are going to be at the heart of that event. Thank you guys so much. I can't wait to break down more tragedy with you guys. Make sure you're looking after yourselves. Have a good day guys. Bye bye.